there, welcome again to Akin Channel. Today our topic is about English 10, Quarter 1, Module 9, Lesson 2, entitled Analogy and Personification. This module is intended for grade 10 students enrolled under Modular Distance Learning. Alright, how analogy and personification work? It says your analogy is a comparison that shows the relationship between two pairs of words. While in personification, ang tawag natin dito sa Filipino ay pagsasatao. It gives attribute or character trait to a human being as if an, an inanimate object can do something like a human being. All right. An analogy is an extended comparison which develops and explains the various points of similarity between the things compared. Like this one. Here, cow is being compared to hen. By the way, this is an example of analogy in this question. Okay. Most of the time, writers use analogies to let the readers connect an unfamiliar experience or circumstance to some other condition that will help the readers to be more familiar with it. Okay. Now, on the other hand, personification can be fun to write, but you should develop them carefully and only for a clear defined purpose. Like this one. In this picture, pencil here is giving attribute of a human being as if it is able to speak or to move by itself. Another one is the picture of a cloud here. Uh, in this picture, it is given an attribute of a human being. Ginagawa siyang parang tao. That's why in Filipino, personification is called pagsasa tao. Ginagawang tao ang isang bagay na hindi naman tao. Alright. Next. They can easily sound pretentious and ridiculous when you want to be serious. Alright, like this one. And another like this one. Now, always remember that personification can cause to provide an inanimate object with human traits for either humorous or vivid effects. Alright, like this one. The alarm clock yelled. Dito sumigaw itong alarm clock na parang tao. Another one is, the slices of bread jump out of the toaster and suddenly scaring me. Okay, itong uh, slices of bread, lumukso na parang tao. So this is called personification. Next, analogies are used to clarify an item, experience, or set of circumstances by likening it point by point to another. Like this one. Frog is being compared to a duck. Okay, next. Personification so works as kind of metaphor by attributing human qualities to non-human things. Just like what I have said a while ago, ang isang bagay na hindi naman tao ay ginagawang parang tao na katulad nitong uh, wind. The wind whistled throughout the day. Ang, ang hangin ay sumipol. Sa buong araw. Okay. Next. Activity 2.1. Analogy versus personification. Direction. Read the following sentences carefully and identify whether each sentence states an analogy or personification. By the way, you should be able to write down the answers here kasi wala itong answers sa kito correction sa inyong module. So, try to write down the answers here. Okay, be ready. Number one, blank. every choice you make is like spinning the wheel of fortune. Sometimes you will get the result that you want, while other times you will end up something you always hope to avoid. The answer here is analogy. Number two, the vines wove their delicate fingers together. The answer here is personification kasi itong vines ay naghahabi na parang tao. Okay. Number three, the radio suddenly stopped singing and stared at me. 
Alright, itong radio ay binibigyan ng katangian na parang tao. That's why this is called personification. Number four, photosynthesis does for plants what digesting food does for animals. It is the process that lets them convert nutrients into the fuel needed to grow and develop. Alright, in this case, ang photosynthesis ay ikinocompare digesting food does for animals. So this is called analogy. Next, life is like a race. The one who keeps running wins the race and the other one who stops to cut a breath losses. This is also an example of analogy. Kasi meron tayo itong comparison. Next, the sea lashed out in anger at the ships, unwilling to tolerate another battle. In this case, the sea is given attribute like a human being, as if it is able to feel anger na parang siya ay may kakayahang magalit. So this is personification. Number seven, the sky misses the sun at night. In this uh, sentence, sky is also given the attribute of a human being as, is, as if it is able to feel something. So this is personification. Number eight, just as a sword is the weapon of a warrior, a pen is the weapon of a writer. Dito meron tayong comparison ng sword at ng pen. So this is analogy. Number nine, how a doctor diagnoses diseases is like how a detective investigates crimes. Dito, ang doctor ay compare dito sa detective. So this is analogy. Number 10, just as a caterpillar comes out of its cocoon, so we must come out of our comfort zone. This is also another example of analogy. Okay, anang activity. Under what I have learned. Number one, a and blank is an extended comparison which develops and explains the various points of similarity between the things compared. Okay, the answer here is analogy. Number two, on the other hand, blank can be fun to write, but you should develop them carefully and only for a clearly defined purpose. The answer here is personification. Number three, blank are used to clarify an item, experience, or set of circumstances by likening it point by point to another. The answer here is analogies. Number four, A and blank usually begins with a simile and then offers some detail and occasionally some narration to illustrate the likeness between two items or experiences. The answer here is analogy. Number five, blank also works as kind of metaphor by attributing human qualities to non-human things. Okay, this figure of speech lends itself readily to humor, but it can also be serious in its emotional impact and on a reader. The answer here is personification. All right, activity 2.2, creating analogies. Direction here is choose three of the following pairs of items or think of a pair of your own. Compare the two items and develop the comparison into an analogy. All right, uh, you should be able to write down the answers here so that uh, you would have a pattern May meron kayong pattern para makagawa kayo ng sarili ninyong sentences. Alright. These are the items that we are going to choose from. Okay. Tatlo lang ang pinapapili dito. So, let us proceed to number one. I choose studying for an exam. That's being compared to filling a shopping cart quickly. Okay. Number one. Studying for an exam is like filling a shopping cart. The more you study, the more you get high grade. While the more you fill your shopping cart, the more you will pay. Number two, I choose a job interview or date that's being compared to a performance on stage. 
A job interview is like a performance on stage. Your ability to answer questions in an interview will determine if you will be accepted or not, whereas your performance on stage will determine if the audience will applaud or not. Okay, number three. I chose a person you know uh, that is being compared to some fruit or vegetable. A person you know is like a fruit or vegetable. You may know a person's outward appearance, but you don't know what's in his mind. Whereas, you can see the outward appearance of a fruit or vegetable, but you don't know if it is rotten inside. Okay. Next activity, 2.3, using personification. And there is the instruction. Write five sentences, each containing personification. Then select an item from the following list to be used in each sentence. All right. Here are the list of the items na pagpipilian. Pero ang pinapagawa dito ay five sentences lang. All right. Let us proceed. Number one, I choose telephone. The telephone is waiting for your call. Ang telephone dito ay binibigyan ng buhay na parang tao. So this is personification. Number two, the skyscraper is courting the clouds. Number three, the signpost knows the direction. Number four, the clouds wander aimlessly in the sky. Number five, this computer loves all kinds of games. Lahat ng sentences na ito ay nagbibigay buhay sa isang bagay na walang buhay. That's why all the sentences are considered under personification. Alright, I hope you have learned something in this video. What's out for my other videos about English grammar? Thank you very much for watching. See you again.